In this topic, we're going to discuss the nitrogen cycle. So we're going to look at biotic and abiotic, why nitrogen gas is stable, how plants take in nitrogen in the form of nitrates, the five stages in the nitrogen cycle, so you've got nitrogen fixation, assimilation, ammonification, nitrification and denitrification, and the bacteria that are important in the nitrogen cycle. So you've got the nitrifying bacteria, for example, nitrosomonas and nitrobacter, and nitrogen-fixing bacteria, for example, rhizobium. Now, living organisms require not only a supply of energy, but they also need a supply of matter that is used to build their bodies. So the elements in matter are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen which are contained in organic molecules. You also find nitrogen in nucleic acids and proteins, and some proteins may contain sulfur, whilst nucleic acids have phosphorus. Other elements needed in smaller amounts are magnesium, calcium, iodine, and iron. So atoms of these elements are used over and over again, or they passed into other ecosystems. So we say that the flow of matter is cyclical, whilst the flow of energy is linear. Now there's a limited supply of nitrogen available to living organisms, so it must be recycled so it doesn't run out. Most nutrient cycles have got two components. You've got the abiotic, which includes the rocks and deposits in the ocean and the atmosphere, and then biotic, which includes producers, consumers, and decomposers. And these help in some way to convert one form of the nutrient into another. Now you know that nitrogen is important, so what is it needed for? Well, it's needed to manufacture proteins, nucleic acids, ATP, and NAD. Now although 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, there are only a few organisms that can use this nitrogen gas directly. Can you think of a reason why? Well this is because the nitrogen molecule has got two atoms linked by a triple covalent bond which makes it extremely stable and unreactive. So with each breath that you take, you're taking in about 350 cubic centimeters of nitrogen gas, but this is completely useless to you. It simply passes in and out of your body unchanged. It's the same for plants. They take in nitrogen gas through their stomata, but they cannot use it because the gas is unreactive. So before nitrogen can be used by living organisms, it needs to be changed from nitrogen gas into some reactive form. So how do plants take in nitrogen? Well, they take in most of the nitrogen in the form of nitrates from the soil. And these are absorbed by active transport by the root hairs. So here you can see a picture of a root hair cell. Now remember that active transport requires protein, protein carrier molecules. And these are found on the plasma membrane of the root hair cell. They're not found in the cellulose cell wall. They're found on the partially permeable plasma membrane. Animals obtain nitrogen-containing compounds by eating and digesting plants. Now nitrate ions are very soluble and these can easily leach through the soil beyond the reach of the plant roots. So one way of rebuilding the nitrate levels is to add fertilizers. But this can also be achieved through the natural recycling of nitrogen-containing compounds. So when plants and animals die, the process of decomposition begins a series of steps by which microorganisms add nitrate levels or add nitrates back to the soil so the nitrate levels increase. So there are five main stages. You've got nitrogen fixation, assimilation, 
ammonification, nitrification, and denitrification. So here you can see the nitrogen cycle. We're going to go through it step by step so that you understand each stage. So remember that there are five stages, nitrogen fixation, assimilation, ammonification, nitrification, and denitrification. Let's begin with nitrogen fixation. This is when nitrogen gas is converted to nitrogen containing compounds. So as I just mentioned, nitrogen gas is converted to nitrogen containing compounds. And there are three ways of doing this. All of these require energy. There's lightning, industrial process, for example, the Haber process, and fixation by microorganisms. So lightning allows nitrogen and oxygen to combine forming oxides of nitrogen and these are washed into the soil by rain and absorbed by plant roots in the form of nitrates. In the industrial process, for example the Haber process, high temperatures and pressures are used to combine nitrogen and hydrogen to produce ammonia. Then ammonium compounds are used to make fertilizers which are added to the soil. Now, only prokaryotes are capable of fixing nitrogen. So fixation by microorganisms is carried out by many bacteria and cyanobacteria living freely in the soil or by some that live in nodules on the roots of leguminous plants. So one of the best known nitrogen fixing bacteria is rhizobium. So how do rhizobium bacteria enter root nodules? Well, rhizobium bacteria live freely in the soil, and they're also found in the roots of many species of plants, called leguminous plants, for example, peas and beans. So here you can see the nodules, which are the swellings on the roots, and these contain the bacteria. So when a leguminous plant germinates, its roots produce proteins called lectins, which bind to the polysaccharides on the cell surface of bacteria. The bacteria then invade the roots, spreading along the root hairs, and they stimulate some of the hairs in the roots to divide and develop into small lumps or nodules inside which the bacteria form colonies. So the plant and the bacteria coexist, with both benefiting from this relationship. So we call this mutualism. So mutualism is when two organisms of different species live very closely together, each meeting the other's needs. Now how do rhizobium bacteria fix nitrogen gas? Well, they use an enzyme called nitrogenase, and this enzyme catalyzes the conversion of nitrogen gas into ammonium ions. So the process requires a supply of hydrogen, ATP, and anaerobic conditions. So the hydrogen comes from a substance called reduced NADP, which is produced by the plant. The ATP comes from the metabolism of sucrose, and sucrose was produced during photosynthesis. So when sucrose is used in respiration, ATP is produced. And then anaerobic conditions are maintained by protein, which is similar to hemoglobin, and it's called leg hemoglobin. And this mops up any available oxygen. So as I just mentioned, the relationship between the bacteria and plant is an example of mutualism. The plant provides the living space for the bacteria, as well as the right conditions for the bacteria to fix the nitrogen. 
The bacteria provide fixed nitrogen for the plant. So we've just discussed nitrogen fixation, where atmospheric nitrogen is fixed into nitrates or ammonia. Let's have a look at assimilation now. Non legumes. Have a look at the left there where it says root nodule. The bacteria convert nitrogen from the soil into ammonium compounds, and the plants can absorb ammonium compounds from the nodules and convert them into amino acids. These then get transported around the plant and used to make proteins. If you look on the right, other plants rely on fixed supplies of nitrogen in the soil. So the root hairs take up nitrate ions by active transport. This gets reduced to nitrite ions and then to ammonium ions for incorporation to amino acids and then proteins. So other plants take nitrate ions in and then they're transported in the xylem to the leaves before undergoing these processes. So most of the nitrogen will end up as part of protein molecules in the plant, especially in the seeds and storage tissues. Animals assimilate their nitrogen in the form of protein, which forms part of the plant or animals that they ate. Okay, let's move on to ammonification. So ammonification is the production of ammonia from organic ammonium containing compounds. So in nature these include urea, proteins, nucleic acids and vitamins. So decomposers mainly fungi and bacteria, feed on these materials and they release ammonia, which forms ammonium compounds in the soil. Nitrification is the conversion of ammonium ions to nitrates. And this involves oxidation reactions, which release energy for the nitrifying bacteria to carry out this process. So this conversion occurs in two stages. You've got oxidation of ammonium compounds to nitrites by nitrifying bacteria. And these live in freely well aerated soil. So sorry, they live freely in well aerated soil. Then you've got oxidation of nitrites to nitrates by other free-living nitrifying bacteria. So the oxygen requirement, oh my goodness, the oxygen requirements of nitrifying bacteria mean that it's important for farmers to keep soil structure light and well aerated by plowing. So good drainage also prevents the air spaces from being filled with water, which would displace air and hence oxygen in the soil. So points to remember about nitrification is that the nitrifying bacteria require oxygen or oxygen is required in this process. Okay, lastly, denitrification. This is the conversion of nitrates into atmospheric nitrogen. Now, when soils become waterlogged, there's a short supply of oxygen, so a different type of bacteria takes over. So fewer nitrifying and free nitrogen fixing bacteria are found. So there's an increase in anaerobic denitrifying bacteria. And these reduce soil nitrates into gaseous nitrogen. So this reduces the available nitrates in the soil for the plants. These bacteria are common in places such as sewage treatment plants, 
compost heaps and wet soils. So denitrification is the conversion of nitrates into atmospheric nitrogen and this requires denitrifying bacteria and anaerobic conditions. Now examples of important bacteria in the nitrogen cycle include nitrifying bacteria, the nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. So these convert ammonia in the soil to nitrite ions and nitrate ions. So look at the left of that diagram. And then you've got nitrogen fixing bacteria, for example rhizobium, where you find them is on the root nodules of roots. And these convert nitrogen gas into ammonium compounds. Okay, so here's the summary diagram of the nitrogen cycle. It's a good idea to draw this out and then to go through this video again. Now be aware of the different processes. You've got nitrogen fixation, nitrogen um, or nitrification and ammonification. So also notice that denitrifying bacteria convert nitrates into atmospheric nitrogen whilst nitrogen fixing bacteria, for example rhizobium, convert atmospheric nitrogen to ammonium compounds. And then nitrifying bacteria convert ammonium compounds into nitrites and then into nitrates. And that concludes our lesson, the end.